All right, hi, House Hunters International, Bob Hutchings, my beautiful wife, India. Hey, how's it going? Where are we? We are in San Jose del Cabo, Mexico. Welcome and, to our Casa India. And this is Casa India, okay, so that's the front door. All right, India will take us in there. Well, we, we have to walk by Casita Roberto first. What is Casita Roberto? What is Casita Roberto? Well, it's a little one-bedroom studio with a kitchenette and a bathroom. So we have a little guest quarters if anybody doesn't want to share the main house with us. And here is lovely Casa India. Welcome. All right. All right, so India, how did we end up in this house? I'll tell you what. I came to Mexico, met you here, and you showed me all these funky condos that had people on top and on each side, little kids running around or people smoking the cigarettes. And I was like, I don't want to smell that and see that and hear that. <laughs> but the condo was something that I was interested in because I thought it would be so easy. We would just buy a, house, a little condo unit, it would be furnished, and we wouldn't have to do any work. Yeah, but you know what? I didn't want to live in Mexico and go to this beautiful tropical place and have to listen to people I didn't like or know partying or listening to their babies crying or maybe they were just getting wasted drinking when I could just have this beautiful private space to myself with my husband. Well, now this beautiful private place wasn't always like this, was it? No, it wasn't. It was kind of a little little uh, disaster or as you affectionately call it, a Mayan ruin. So um, I saw it as a diamond in the rough and uh, so I guess it's about equal as a Mayan ruin. So. Uh, we could, uh, we, we basically thought that it would absolutely be a beautiful place if somebody could just do the work. We weren't exactly sure who or how or who to talk to or anything, so it's been a little mind-boggling. Yeah, because people tell you to come down, you're going to come down here, you're going to hire a contractor, everything's going to cost twice as much, it's going to take twice as long, and that was a, a, a big risk that we had to take, and finding the contractor was a big deal. Yeah, it was. We interviewed, was it two or three different contractors, um, names we had gotten from our real estate broker. Was there someone else that we gave us? That gave us our references? real estate broker and our lawyer uh, and another real estate agent are the ones how we ended up finding the contractor that we had. Yeah. So we're stepping out into this backyard, which uh, really didn't look anything like this when we first uh, bought this place. Maybe, India, you could describe it a little bit. Oh my uh, goodness. Well, when I walked back here, before it looked like this, it was like an overgrown and devastated um, yard in Mexico. There was a falling palm tree. There were citrus trees, which had citrus on them, but they were looking a little sickly and unloved and dehydrated. Um, there was this really ugly, broken jacuzzi type thing that had stuff in it. I don't know what it was, but it grossed me out. Um, so anyways, I can get kind of grossed out by certain things. But I could see this as a total tropical oasis, even so. And I, I'm not very good at visualizing things, but just given the place where we're at in the corner next to a golf course and a private home, I was like, this has got to be the place, right? You know, there used to be this uh, chain link fence back here and it went all the way down the side of the house where we now have this beautiful golf course and this view. Uh, but the chain link fence, when I looked at this house for the first time, because I saw it online and looked at it and thought maybe we should take a look closer look at it. And, uh, and India was all hot on it. She's like, yeah, this is beautiful diamond in the rough. Let's buy it. And I'm just thinking, oh my God, it's so much work. Look at it. It's a disaster. And I looked through the fence one morning early uh, as the sun came up and I, and, it, and it's like the little bird said, it'll be a fun project. Could you talk about the little bird? Cause I don't think anybody knows what the little bird is. It's not the little bird in his head. <laughs> well, there's doves everywhere. Okay. And there's all these other signs that if you look at signs like cactuses or things like that, um, that made it seem like this is some place that I would really feel at home. However, the work was daunting. There was so much to be done, yeah. and the expenses, and the and the idea of how do you do this from Eugene? Yeah. Okay. What about living in Eugene and coming here? Why would we come to San Jose del Cabo? 
Well, I'll tell you what, Eugene, Oregon is an absolutely beautiful place to live. But in the winter time, usually, we have rain, gray, it's a little cold, usually no snow, and often, because we're in the Willamette Valley, we're in pea soup fog. So it gets a little old and depressing and a little soggy after a while. So we would love to be in the sunshine during the winter. So this would be, we decided, one of the best places to go in the winter when other people in Oregon are suffering. What I really love about coming to uh, Cabo is that the flight is so easy to get to get here. It's not a big deal. Going to Florida from Eugene, Oregon is a big deal. It takes a long time to get there. It takes almost 12 hours sometimes. Yeah. And that's a pain. That's true. But yesterday we were able to get on a flight at 6.15 and we were able to check in. Well, we didn't have to check in because we own it. Uh, <laughs> but uh, this is the view from the master bedroom. So, yeah. There's our... The deck and the beautiful This is pool. our master bedroom deck. All right, yeah, so uh, I wanna go down and maybe show you the kitchen too. I mean, there, there's another bedroom up here and a full bath. I mean, maybe you wanna talk about this bath and what it looked like, India, no. when we first came to this house. Oh my gosh. What was this room this like? This room, probably to me, was the most disgusting room that I had to basically build up my courage to walk in here to see the state of affairs because there was this huge bathtub and this whole skylight was breached from the hurricane or something and there were dead uh, cockroaches and what was it a lizard oh, a dead lizard. lizard in the sink and mouse poop and lizard poop everywhere and it smelled awful like the outside had come in not the kind of outside you want <laughs> So it was like a litter box for tropical creatures, basically. Um, and I want to talk a little, a little bit more about uh, why we picked San, San Jose del Cabo. Okay. And what was, uh, I'll just talk briefly, very, you know, when we first came down here, there's this thing called the Art Walk that happens at the town square, which is really special. Oh, sweet. Yeah. And I stood on the corner of this cobblestone street with these art shops everywhere, and I found that, um, I immediately felt this sense of, this is a place I could live. And uh, little did I know that we would be purchasing a place very quickly and that we would find this whole world here in uh, San Jose del Cabo. So this is the kitchen. And uh, India, what, what about you? Why did you want to live here? I think you had some experience down here. Yeah, I had been here probably but probably five or six years ago, I had come and visited a friend who had a timeshare here. And we stayed in a timeshare just probably a few blocks down at the Grand Mayan, I believe. And so I spent probably at least a half a week here and I got to explore on foot this town. And um, I found that it's a very walkable, sweet Mexican town and I could walk to the main square where there's cobblestone streets. and. This feels more quaint Mexican, and there's art galleries, and every Thursday there's an art gallery walk, and all these sweet little restaurants, and I just felt like this is a place that I could live. Besides, there's a really great French bakery, which encouraged me to go for that walk every morning and get my cappuccino and my croissant, <laughs> which is pretty awesome, so. The other thing that we both appreciate that's nice about uh, San Jose del Cabo is, you know, last weekend there was the Iron Man here. So there's some serious healthy activities going on. Yeah. It's big surf, lots of uh, surfers. I've always wanted to take up surfing, but I'm all talk at this point. And, uh, but there's mountain biking. Again, we ran into some really friendly locals that talked about the mountain biking scene that happens just up the road from here with 30 mile rides and 70 mile rides going from La Paz over to Todos Santos. And those kind of things really intrigue us. There's scuba diving and skin diving and parasailing and jeeping. And um, what other activities that we, I mean, Basically any Fine dining. beach, ocean activity uh, is accommodating here. We have great little restaurants here. Um, there's Mexican culture. The um, fishing, a big fishing area. Oh, and this was kind of a, this, this also ha actually helped me help my husband buy this place. Is 
we're only two, two, walk, two block walk to make a store for groceries and a Starbucks. <laughs> okay. Now, I tell you what, I'm that... a little bit of a coffee whore, so sorry. <laughs> okay, on the coffee whore note, we will leave that out of the, no, we're not no. gonna cut it out. Here's 10 minutes and 15 seconds of the Hutchings in Cabo. Okay, uh, we'd love to do the show, so uh, get back at us, thanks, bye-bye. <laughs> We were just doing this spinning thing. I think we're still doing it, so oh. let's stop.